So there you go, that's everything there is to know about my new compass. <laughs> oh, got my tea. And don't worry, by the way, my, even though it's really cold out here today, my tea is still nice and warm. People are always telling me that I should not use this ridiculously big flask, and I sometimes agree when I have to carry it up a large hill. But on the flip side, it's warmer than if I'd used a camping stove to make it here. Because at the moment, we're about 100 meters in altitude above my house. So if I'd have made it on a camping stove here, the water would have boiled at a lower temperature. Ah, so my tea would be, sorry, my, it's coffee today, it's not tea. So my coffee would be colder than if I'd made it at home. Because as a rough guide, water boils at approximately 0 0.3 degrees Celsius lower for every 100 meters of altitude that you, that you gain. As an example, if you made a cup of tea on the top of Mount Everest, where water boils at approximately 70 degrees, not only would it be cold, it, it would taste weak and flat and watery. It wouldn't taste very nice because you need very hot water to release the flavor and the aroma compounds inside the tea leaves. And colder water just doesn't do that. So, <laughs> Well, I started to waffle, haven't I? <laughs> but do you know why water boils lower? Oh, sorry, at a lower temperature, the higher you go. No? Good question. Thank you for asking. Well, <laughs> you, you can pause the video now or just, just turn it off. But <laughs> there are lots of really complicated ways to explain it. Statistical mechanics using the Maxwell-Boltzmann uh, distribution, chemical compound and phase e equilibrium rings. You can use Gibbs free energy or the, uh, what's it called? The, um, uh, the Clausius -Clap Clausius Clapeyron relationship, which is where we get the 0 0.3 degrees from. You can use fluid mechanics, you can use nucleation theory and so on and so on. But as I'm going to release this video on New Year's Day, let's keep things really, really simple. Cause I imagine that most people were quite, um, how can I put it? They were quite merry last night. <laughs> so we'll keep everything really simple. And we'll just say that the reason water boils at a lower temperature, the higher, higher up you go, is because of gravity. You know, when everything else can, we, we can overcomplicate it, but it's, it's basically gravity. And I'll assume that you know that gravity is what makes things with mass move towards each other. Yeah? If there are two things and they, they, they both pull on each other, but the, the thing with more mass pulls stronger. And yes, I know, before everybody starts writing comments, today we're going to call it a pull. <laughs> That's it. And when I say more mass, this has nothing to do with the size. As an example, it, 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 if you've got a table tennis ball and a snooker ball, they're both approximately the same size, but the snooker ball has more stuff inside it. It's got more mass. So the snooker ball will pull on the table tennis ball more. Is that a good... A, so I've started to waffle now, haven't I? But as you know, or hopefully you know, the air is full of lots of different types of gas molecules. And these molecules have mass. So each one of those little molecules pulls on the Earth. And the Earth also pulls on the gas molecules. But because the Earth is so much more massive, it's got more stuff, it's got more mass, the Earth pulls the air molecules more than the air molecules pull the Earth. Is that, <laughs> are we okay with this? And the basic result of this is that the air molecules tend to move downwards towards the Earth. You can picture gravity as an, in, an invisible pulling field around the, around the world, around the Earth. It's strongest near the ground and it thins out as you move away. And the result of this is there is more air near the ground, lower down. It's, it's compressed and it's, it's more dense. And the higher you go, the less compressed it becomes and it becomes thinner. So you've got less air higher up. So what has this all got to do with my cup of coffee, or my cup of tea? Well, this is the key bit. 
Water molecules are always escaping from the surface of the liquid and turning into vapor, which is one of the, the gases in the air. And at the same time, water molecules in the air are returning back into the liquid. And both of these things are happening all the time. The vapor, that's the gas form of water, pushes on its surrounding and the pressure caused by this moving, these moving vapor molecules, that's called the vapor pressure. The faster the molecules move, the higher that vapor pressure becomes. So it pushes more. Now, here's the important part. Inside the liquid, tiny vapor bubbles are constantly trying to form. And under normal conditions, they collapse almost immediately because the pressure of the surrounding liquid which already includes the effects of the, the pressure of the air above, squeezes them shut and forces the molecules back into the liquid. And that's why evaporation normally only happens at the surface, because the one place where the vapor gas bubbles, they're not being crushed, they're not being crushed from all sides, is on the surface. It's only being crushed from freeze, you know, at the side. There's nothing above it. So the water, that's why it can escape. If I add more energy by heating, you know, heating the water, the molecules are able to move faster and more of them escape, you know, escape into the vapor phase, which increases the pressure inside the liquid. Okay. Boiling begins when the vapor pressure becomes high enough to balance the pressure of the surrounding liquid. So the vapor bubbles that normally form and are crushed, once there's plenty of energy and they're moving around really fast, they can stay. They can actually stay as bubbles and they can grow and rise through the water instead of immediately collapsing. Near the ground where air pressure is higher, the surrounding liquid pressure is higher too. So the molecules have to be moving faster, meaning that you have to add more heat you know, before a balance is reached. Higher up where there is less air around you, you know, because of gravity, the surrounding pressure is lower. So the same balance is, is reached with less molecular energy and the water boils at a lower temperature. And that's why, thanks to gravity, my coffee would normally be cooler if I made it here on a gas stove than if, I, than if I brought it from my house in a flask. Um, mind, it's being kept in a flask, hasn't it? How do flasks keep your tea hot? Well, that's a whole, <laughs> that is a whole different bit of physics and that I'll have to wait for a, a different time. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, my new compass. <laughs> we were talking about my new compass, weren't we? And I started off on one of my normal idiotic waffles. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for watching, and as I said, it's New Year's Day today, so I hope you have a great New Year.